Just after noontime on May 22, 1856, Preston Brooks walks into the Senate chamber, the, and he strides up the center aisle carrying a cane in his hand. Sumner is at his desk with his head down, his legs trapped under his desk that's bolted to the floor. Brooks reaches him and as he gets to Sumner's desk says, Mr. Sumner, I have read your speech over twice. It is a libel against my relative and my state. And with that raises his cane and strikes Sumner on the top of his head. Sumner is blinded almost immediately by blood and Brooks at that point simply loses it and begins to beat Sumner again and again. Sumner falls and stumbles and gasps, oh God, oh Lord, falls into another desk. Brooks continues to hit him again and again until finally his cane has splintered into many pieces and Sumner lapses into unconsciousness. As the caning is going on, very, very few people step up to actively save Charles Sumner. Sumner uh, is not well liked, even by northern colleagues. He's got a certain arrogance, a certain condescension. Charles Sumner's northern colleagues take him into a, a side room after the attack. Sumner suffers enormous injuries. He has spinal injuries, some kind of brain trauma. He misses the next three years in the Senate as a result of his injuries. Preston Brooks is a hero in the South. There are many, many uh, rallies and celebrations. He receives hundreds of canes as a gift, many of them inscribed with the words, hit him again. I would call the caning one of the most provocative events in American history. It is the no turning back point on the road to civil war. The most immediate result of the caning was that thousands of moderate and conservative northerners, people who were not necessarily abolitionists, join the abolitionist Republican Party, this brand new party to which Charles Sumner was a member, and, and, and make a huge difference in the growth of the Republican Party. So it's almost as though the caning redefines these attitudes north and south. And so there is very, very little room for moderation and very, very little room for compromise after this event. So what the caning does is it obliterates that very, very fragile truce between north and south that had existed really since the country's founding. The question becomes, would the Civil War have happened without the Canaan?